On this episode of China Uncensored, don't panic. Now's not the time to lose your head. Hi, welcome to China Uncensored. I'm your host, Chris Chappell. Meet Dr. Ren Xiaoping. He was part of the team that performed the first successful hand transplant in the U.S. in 1999. Let's give him a hand. And now he's going out on a limb because he wants to be the first person to perform a head transplant on a human. That would involve taking a living head and transplanting it on a recently deceased body. Now this would make headlines, truly a medical breakthrough. There's one tiny problem. It's impossible to do, according to pretty much everyone. So it's a little concerning that Dr. Ren already has a volunteer a 62-year-old Chinese man paralyzed from the neck down from a wrestling injury. So if Dr. Ren goes through with the operation, he will be transplanting this guy's living head onto a dead body, and it will most likely result in a new, fully dead body. Is Dr. Ren throwing away moral ethics simply to get ahead in life, or does he just have a big head? Well, according to him, he's a pioneer heading into a new era in medicine. 半个世纪以前做第一个心脏移植之前，也面对着争论呢很大，甚至手移植移植，二十年前做手移植的时候，也面临着这个伦理的问题。头移植呢，它可能它冲击更大。There's a difference, though. Those operations came only after years of research and animal trials, and they were still incredibly risky. This is sewing a severed head onto a dead body. To be fair, over the years, Dr. Ren has performed head transplants on hundreds of mice. The problem is the result. Every mouse dies. Not every mouse truly lives. Well, some of them lived for about a day. I would not call that a complete success. Dr. Ren has also begun experiments on human cadavers, but declined to give details. I wonder if any of them came back to life. And that's the thing. Ren might be getting a little ahead of himself. The first head transplant was performed on a monkey by an American scientist in 1970. But it's hard to call that monkey business a success since the monkey died several days later after the body's immune system rejected the head. And you don't want to know what happened to the monkey's paw. <coughs> It's also more difficult to make the transplanted head actually be able to control the new body, since those spinal connections are really hard to reattach. Though apparently Dr. Ren was able to restore some function in those mice, the ones that died within a day. So ethical issue number one is that the head transplant patient will probably die. But even if the transplant is a success, who's the survivor, the head or the body? But let's say we get past all those ethical concerns and it's time for Dr. Ren to operate on his first patient. Where will Dr. Ren get the donor's body from? People in China don't have a tradition of donating their bodies to science. And if you've watched this episode, you know there's some extremely sketchy things going on with China's organ donation system. Like how state-run hospitals there are killing prisoners of conscience and selling their organs for profit. So it's not unlikely that the body could come from someone in a labor camp. Now I'm not saying China shouldn't make scientific progress. It's just that Dr. Ren might be a bit too headstrong to let ethical considerations or medical reality get in the way. So what do you think? Is this the future of medicine? Or is this just a shameless opportunity for me to use puns? Leave your comments below. Thanks for watching this episode of China Uncensored. Once again, I'm your host, Chris Chappell. See you next time. This is Jordan Horowitz, the co-director and producer of Angel of Nanjing. It's a film about a guy who's dedicated the past 10 years of his life to preventing people from killing themselves on the Yangtze River Bridge in Nanjing. Earlier this month, Wang and Canada's foreign affairs minister held a peaceful joint press conference in Ottawa. When suddenly, this Canadian so-called reporter, Amanda Conley, tried to undermine China by asking a question about so-called human rights. And this was Wang's response. I have to say that your question is full of prejudice against China and arrogance.